What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over the differences as well as the similarities between x squared minus one, x cubed minus one, as well as x to the fourth minus one. Now we're mainly gonna focus on factoring, but I'll give you a little bonus at the end where I'll actually go through actually the solutions to all of these if they were like set equal to zero so we can understand how to actually factor them down into linear factors. Because a lot of times that's where students get um, hung up on once we start dealing with higher orders. But the one thing students probably agree upon is the difference in two squares they understand, right? They usually recognize that relationship of something squared minus something else squared. And you probably have that formula memorized that formula of a squared minus b squared can be rewritten in a factor form of a minus b times a a plus b. So it's just important to make sure we recognize when we have that difference of two squares. It's when the first term is squared, which you can see is x is squared, but then also when my second term is squared, right? Now, a lot of times, sometimes students don't see that as one being squared, but one can be, one is a squared number, right? You can think about a one as one squared, or you can think of four as two squared, nine as three squared, 16 as four squared, right? So you always want to make sure you recognize those squared numbers so you can see when you have that relationship. Now, once you see that you have the relationship of a squared number minus another squared number, you can go ahead and rewrite it in the factored form. Now, when I'm first teaching this to students, you know, typically like an algebra one class, I'll say like, let's break it down. Let's say um, A is going to be your first term. So A is equal to X and B is equal to one. Now we know the formula or the factored form let's just go ahead and plug them in. So therefore this would be a X minus one times a X plus one. And so, and there we go. That is the factored form for the difference of two squares. Now let's go and get to the difference of two cubes. So in this one, again, a lot of times those students will see, all right, well, I can rewrite one as a cube number, right? And just like eight, you could rewrite as two cubed. Um, you could do 27 as three cubed, 64 as four cubed. So think of, look for those cube numbers. Now in this case, we have a cube number minus another cube number. But unlike the difference of two squares, the difference of two cubes has a formula that is a little bit more difficult to remember and memorize. And a lot of students don't do it. Like I get it, it doesn't come up as often as the difference of two squares. But if you're going into higher order mathematics, like pre-calculus and calculus, I think it's important to have that in your back pocket and not so much to get some flashcards to go ahead and memorize it, but to work through enough examples. So therefore you can recall it rather quickly. And obviously if you know you're going to have a test coming up, like, yeah, maybe you just go through it a couple of times to make sure um, it's easy to refresh in your brain. So here's the formula for the difference of two cubes. If I have an A cubed minus a B cubed, so I can have a variable cubed and then minus another cube number, which I already went over the formula or the factored form for that is going to be an A minus B times a a squared plus the product of a b plus a b squared. Now the cool thing about the difference of two cubes, unlike the difference of two squares, is we have a counterpart. We also have the difference, or sorry, the sum of two cubes. We don't have the sum of two squares, but don't worry, I'm gonna talk about that once we get into that linear factors, right? I'll talk to you how we go about that. So if I do have the sum of two cubes, it's gonna be very similar to um, the difference of two squares, it's just the signs are really going to be swapped. So whatever this first binomial is always going to be the same sign. We're always going to have our terms are going to be squared, but then our middle term is going to be the opposite sign and then plus a B squared again, right? So you can see it's really just a manipulation uh, with the signs is going to help us be able to factor that down. So again, just like, you know, if we were like first learning this, we would say, all right, what is our A? Our A is going to be our X, that first term cubed. And our B is going to be our second term cubed, which in this case is going to be one. So if we're doing the A cubed minus, or I'm sorry, we're doing X cubed minus one, that factor form is simply going to be an X minus one times a X squared, and then we do one times X, so which is just going to be an X, and then plus a one squared, which is going to be a positive one. Now, you see here we have a quadratic, right? Now, if we needed to factor this further down, or if this um, quadratic was set equal to zero, then we need to be able to solve. So how could we go ahead and solve this? Well, I will show you about that after I get to X to the fourth, because I need to kind of um, show you the a basic way to understand solving and the solutions um, or the linear factors for X to the fourth, and then it'll make a lot more sense to what we're gonna do here. So let's go ahead and use a little bit more work. Let's bring this one down here. So if I had X to the fourth minus one, Again, hopefully you can recognize that one can be represented as a cubed, as a, a number to the fourth power, right? One to the fourth power is one, just like two to the fourth power is going to be 16, right? So look for those numbers that are to the fourth power. And you can see we have a difference 
of um, two fourths, I guess. But it's going to be very similar to the difference of two squares um, and not so much different with the difference of two cubes. But there are some similarities, and that's what I want to talk about. So what I want you to be able to see is, again, we can rewrite this like this, right, as one to the fourth power. Now, here's the thing. It's very similar in the difference of two squares, right? Where I can rewrite this. If I was going to think about this in difference of two squares, I would be like x minus one times an x plus one. Okay. Now, one thing we talk about when we're factoring polynomials to the higher order is we want to say, all right, well, we can always check our answer for factoring by multiplying something back out, right? X times x gives me an x squared. Negative one times one is going to give me a one, right? And the middle terms, when you multiply those, those go to zero. If you wanted to multiply this binomial times this trinomial, it's a lot more work than it's worth it, but you'll see this times this is going to give me back my original equation or expression x cubed minus one. The problem here is if I think about this in terms of fact uh, difference to squares, x times x does not give me x to the fourth. x times x gives me x squared, right? So what I'm going to want to do in this problem is raise the powers. So an x squared times an x squared. x squared times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth. Now, again, I rewrote this in terms of fourth, so you could see that one is a, um, you could think about it as a number to the fourth power. But again, one to the fourth power is just going to be one. And negative one times positive one is going to give you back that negative one. Now, here, what's cool about this is I actually now created another difference of two squares. So I can factor that down to an x minus one times an x plus one. But I can't continue factoring the sum of two squares, right? I can't do that over here, at least across the real number system. So what if I needed to factor this down to linear factors? Or what if I needed to solve this equation? What if this equation was set equal to zero? What would I do? So here's how you can find the linear factors um, for a sum of two squares. What I would do is I would just set it equal to zero. So I'd have an x squared plus one is equal to zero. Then I would just go ahead and solve using the square root method. So x squared is equal to negative one. Now I'm going to introduce the square root. Remember when you introduce the square root, you have to include plus or minus. And then now we're bringing in the imaginary number system, or this is what we call the imaginary unit. And the square root of negative one is going to be represented as i. Now what's important about this is I can now rewrite these back as factors. I can subtract an i and add an i, and therefore I'd get x minus i is equal to zero, and an x plus i is equal to zero. Now, again, when you're applying the zero product property, these are what we call our factors, ladies and gentlemen. So these would be the two factors that if you were to multiply this back out, that's going to give you an x squared plus one. So if you want to identify what the factored form would be, as far as linear factors, it'd be x minus one times an x plus one times an x minus i times an x plus i. So if you think about the solutions, we have two real solutions and then two imaginary solutions, one, negative one i as well as negative i. Now let's go back over here because this is what I was talking about. Like that was fairly simple. There wasn't a little hard math to be able to do that. But over here, I need if I wanted to find what these linear factors are, again, I need to set it equal to zero, right? So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to set a x squared plus x plus one is equal to zero. Now, unfortunately, I can't use the square root method like I did over here. In this case, what I would need to use is the good old quadratic formula. So just like I tell students, make sure you memorize the difference of two squares formula. You should be familiar with the difference of two cubes and sum of two cubes. The quadratic formula is something that comes up over and over and over again. So I'd highly recommend you make sure you have that. So the opposite of b, so that's going to be um, opposite of b, which is 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus a 4 times a times c, and again, I'm taking these all from this quadratic, divided by a 2 times a. Now, I can simplify this rather quickly to, let's see, that's going to be 1 squared minus 4, so it's going to be a negative 3, and then that's going to be divided by 2. Now, just like I took the square root to negative 1 and I made that i, I can think about this as a negative 1 times 3, so therefore it'd be i squared of 3. So x is equal to a negative 1, plus or minus a i squared of three, that represents that square root of negative one, divided by two. Now those, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Are again my two other um, factors. Now, how would you write these in our factor form? Well, what I would do is I would rewrite this. This two divides into both of these. So therefore that's a negative one half, plus or minus a i squared of three, divided by two. 
Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is each time I'm going to add a one half to get that over to the other side. Cause we want to be able to write these as fat as set equal to zero. And then I'm going to add and subtract the I squared of three over two. So it's going to look something like this. I know it's a little messy. So one plus one half minus I squared of three over two, that would equal zero. And then I could have X plus one half plus a I squared of three divided by two equals zero. Again, going back to what I just said, these are your factors, right? So when I talked about writing this down as a linear factorization, holy moly, it's going to be pretty crazy and not, uh, not that easy looking, but guess what? These are just two imaginary solutions. Okay. So just like they're over here, it's a little bit easier and this one's a little bit more messy, but it's still going to come out. And so it's important. You're going to have one real uh, solution, and then you're going to have two imaginary solutions. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's the difference. You can see some of these are a lot easier to work with. Some of these are a little bit messier, but that is okay. So if you want more help with solving polynomials, factoring, and finding the zeros, then check out the videos I have for you down below. If you like being able to identify, compare, and, and find the difference between different problems, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.